friends, welcome back to Incredibly Useful Exercises for the Double Bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short, stolen moments. Thank you for joining me in today's casual hangout in the neighborhood of sixth position. We'll explore how to increase our accuracy and tone on harmonics by playing simple songs using only harmonics in sixth position. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. This exercise takes four minutes to play, maybe five. Control and mindfulness are three, expression and endurance are two, and the rest are zero. We play these songs for the practice and mastery of tone, accuracy, and left arm position in the sixth position harmonics. This exercise is a study in contrasts. On the one hand, we have a technique that stretches our left arm to the limit of the instrument. To a non-bassist, this appears to be the height of difficulty. They see us fighting with our bass while hearing a flute-like tone, an impossible sound coming from a wooden box. On the other hand, we're playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the most basic and recognizable song in the history of the world. Why do we use the most difficult technique on the instrument to play the world's simplest song? Because six position notes are not difficult. It's a gimmick and we have to learn where the notes are. So we use simple songs to locate and master them. In sixth position, the thumb rests on the one quarter point of the string, producing a note which is the same name as the open string. Thumb on the D string is a D, thumb on the A is an A, and thumb on G is a G. The first finger plays on the one fifth point of the string, which is about two inches from the thumb, which sounds a major third above the thumb note. C sharp on the A, F sharp on the D, and B on the G. The second finger plays on the one-sixth point of the string, which is about one and a quarter inches from the first finger. It sounds a minor third above that. E on the A, A on the D, and D on the G. And lastly, on the D string only, the third finger plays a harmonic note on the one-seventh point, about three quarters of an inch from the second finger, sounding a bad minor third above the second finger. This note is C natural. All of these fingers stay assigned to the same node on every string and they don't drift back or forth. Simple. All we have to do is train our fingers to fall on these same places from day to day. And luckily, our hand is built for that. So notice how on my orchestra bass, the end of the fingerboard falls between my first and second fingers. But on my solo bass, the end of the fingerboard extends past my second finger. Not every fingerboard is the same length. Yours is most likely different, and that's nothing to worry about. So your fingers may fall in different places than mine relative to the end of the fingerboard. Note where your fingers land, where the fingerboard ends, and use that to help find sixth position. When you start playing these songs, you'll notice quickly that the notes don't move intuitively from one to the other like all the other positions. Every adjacent note's on a different string, and this will feel strange and infuriating at first, but I do find that most students quickly adapt with just a few days of repetitions. The songs we play are all early songs. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Lightly Row, Go Tell Aunt Rhody, Long Long Ago, Lavender's Blue, Oh Come Little Children, and Jingle Bells. Just because the songs are simple doesn't mean that they'll sound good at first. You'll struggle at first, but after a few days, they'll be terrific. There's a saying I use when I teach simple songs with unfamiliar techniques. We don't learn songs. We learn skills. In this exercise, I'm not using a position to teach a song. 
I'm using a familiar song to teach a new position. That is a subtle but very important difference for teachers. So the plan is for the student to master these simple songs in sixth position before they go on to Dragonetti or Bottasini. I know a lot of you teachers have seen students try to play Dragonetti before they're ready for it. This exercise prepares the student for that. There are four primary technical considerations for sixth position harmonics. First, I touch the strings from the inside of the string rather than directly down on top of the strings. This lets me use the sideways weight of my left arm to stop the strings and reduces the chance that my fingers will miss the strings. Second, I play the harmonics in the upper half of the bow. This allows my skeleton to stay open and not crushed like this. Keep the bow very, very straight when you play. If the bow drifts up or down even a little bit, the tone will change drastically. And last, I transfer bow weight into the string with a twisting motion of the right arm instead of a pinching motion in my right thumb. The last thing I'll say before we play is that each of you watching has a different shaped base and body. Some are tall with a small base, some are short with a big base, some sit and some stand, but no matter what shape or size of the base and your body, find a way to wrap your left fingers over the end of the fingerboard, like this. If you can do this comfortably, you can play these songs. If you can't, then you may need to lower your base to let your arm fall easily to the end of the fingerboard. So to recap, Here's how we play the exercise. Touch the strings from the inside. Stay in the upper half of the bow. Keep the bow straight and the thumb quiet. Before I play, I plan my recovery strategy because once I start, I don't let any mistake or fatigue stop me, just like in live performance. This exercise challenges you to hold your left arm in an extended position for about four to five minutes. Not everyone can do this right away, and that's okay. If you start to feel any pain, finish the current song, then bring your left arm away from the bass and to the body. Rest until the pain goes away, and then return to the next song when you're ready. And always make sure you're in the upper half of the bow. Okay, let's play. Ready? One, two, ready.
And that is six position harmonic songs. These songs were inspired by George Vance's life-changing book, Progressive Repertoire for the Double Bass, Volume 1. Links are below. I'd like to thank Martha Vance for her kind help and encouragement in assembling this exercise. For you teachers, I highly recommend requiring your students to play this for you before they go launching off into Dragonetti or Bottasini. It'll save a lot of headache that I know a lot of you have already experienced. This has been a lifesaver for me in those instances. And for an extra challenge, once you have the songs mastered, play them with a big wiggle bowing division and with growing bows for dynamics. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find the sixth position harmonic songs as useful for your performance as it has been for mine. I present this in the way that I've used and benefited from it. I never intend to say that it's the only way to practice or approach this concept. You can adapt any of these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, or teaching. Practice this and all exercises in this series in short stolen moments or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions below. Please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books, available in paperback and ebook on the Amazon site in your country. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you, and be well, friends.